All right, let's dive into some analysis of the passenger. And there's something uh, that I find truly interesting about Mandalorian and the um, approach of the show in its second season is that it's made it very clear now that the main character is truly a good person. And I think that that was um, an interesting question, a, a mystery surrounding the bulk of the first season is we didn't know whether we were supposed to be able to put our trust in the Mandalorian as a character. The Mandalorians that we'd seen up until this point uh, were more bounty hunters, more self-serving. We're getting to meet uh, this side of the character that's way more sympathetic, that chooses to do the right thing more often than not. To the point where we're so far over the, the line of whether we know we should trust this guy or not, that now that's become pretty pivotal that his good deeds are now benefiting him. Like there's a moment when he's supposed to have been arrested by the uh, X-Wing pilots and they essentially say, we're gonna let you go because of uh, things that you've done in the past that we recognize as, as good. And he is, he's a good person. He's compassionate when it comes to the eggs and he He's looking out for the safety of not just the child who he's been doing since the show started, but his passenger who he's taken on board. And he takes these missions against his will, usually, even in the season premiere. Like, he agrees to sort of help them with the crate Dragon because he, yes, he wants the Mandalorian armor, but also he recognizes that this town is truly in danger of being wiped out in a traditional Western sort of way. He'd be a white hat cowboy, right? Like, not a black hat villain cowboy. He is, without a doubt... Uh, establishing himself as that type of character. And, uh, and I think that that's a really smart place for the Mandalorian to be as it goes into season two. Like we don't want any sort of questions about whether we're supposed to be on this guy's side or not. There are stories that can live in a gray area, but I don't think Mandalorian needs to be that type of guy. Brings us around to the fact that it is still very clearly a mission of the week. Uh, the adventure that we went on this week has no connection at all whatsoever to the premiere, and it's not getting him anywhere closer to figuring out the uh, the race of creatures that Baby Yoda is, which is something that we were told is going to be pivotal to season two, and it hasn't been yet so far. However, while I will continue to gripe about the movie of the week structure or adventure of the week structure, uh, th there's no question that this is the greatest interpretation of uh, the Star Wars universe that we've seen since the original trilogy. The creature design, the mythology building that goes into each episode of The Mandalorian is spectacular. And it, it feels as if it's building completely off of what was offered to us in the original trilogy while still taking advantage of the advancements in, um, in special effects and creature design and, uh, you know, turning Baby Yoda into a character that we so deeply care about. There's a moment when he's leaning against the uh, the egg crate and, he, and all the eggs sort of float down to him. Like, it's all practical. And we're invested emotionally in this character, which is unreal for the puppetry uh, that's involved in bringing these characters to life. The design of these spider creatures, while was very heavily an alien influence, was still unbelievably great. And it got me. It totally got me. I, like, I had hope that when the ship was uh, getting off the ground, that Mando was going to figure a way out of it. And the giant spider landing on top of him was a tremendous surprise. The recreations of the X-Wing fighters, like it just looks amazing. It looks so badass. And I have to tip my hat to Mandalorian in that they are pulling other directors. This week's episode was directed by Peyton Reed, who we know from the Ant-Man films, uh, directed Bring It On, and clearly someone who grew up on the original trilogy. He's of that age where I'm sure Star Wars was extremely influential to him, and here he gets a crack at telling a story in that world, and he doesn't disappoint at all. He, take, he makes use of all the tools that are there in the environment, and he brings them to use for uh, a great a great episode of television. So I wish that the main story evolved a little bit more. Uh, we don't know where Mando's going to go now that his craft can barely get him to his destination. Uh, and I'm going to assume that we're going to pick up from that point on. And the introduction of Boba Fett had no impact here on episode two, which for you guys might be fine. For me, I kind of wanted to see a little bit more development in terms of that character, but we'll see where the, uh, the season goes from here. That was uh, analysis of The Passenger, episode two of season two. Make sure that you keep it here on Cinema Blend so that we can continue to break down Mandalorian as season two rolls out.